Hello everyone, today we are officially starting our explanation of the Red Hat Certified Engineer Exam Question Bank. Now, when it comes to an intermediate level certification, the difficulty will certainly increase. So everyone should be prepared for that. You should be mentally prepared, but overall, as long as you practice the content in the question, bank well, passing the exam is not very difficult. Here, first, let's Take a look at the method for deploying the environment of our entire question bank. See, before deployment, we'll give you a brief introduction to the whole environment. Previously, in the beginner's exam, we only had two virtual machines. You only needed to operate on two virtual machines. But in our intermediate environment, we have a total of my six virtual machines. Among the six virtual machines, one is our management or control terminal. And the other five are regular clients. We need to use this control terminal to manage the other five for various operations. Ah, this is us. This is the main environment for our intermediate level, which consists of a total of six virtual machines. From here, you can see that the number of virtual machines has obviously increased. Previously, we only needed to operate two, but now we are working with six. Yo. Of course, the main operations are concentrated on our control terminal. The other machines in the background don't really require logging in. You can perform operations directly from our control terminal. For our intermediate exam, it revolves around a single theme, which is our automation tool, Ansible. With Ansible, we can actually operate other client machines from the control terminal. This way, there's no need to log in to other clients, uh, which is one point. Another point is about some basic configurations. The basic configurations, such as IP addresses and host names, are already pre-configured in the environment. One e, please do not change them, do not make any modifications, especially if, for example, some have set up passwordless login. Since it's necessary to do so, setting up passwordless login is quite normal. After setting up passwordless login, please do not, right? So, do not change any SSH configurations, as it might prevent you from logging in. Of course, there's a point to note. In some environments, they might not set up passwordless login for you. In this case, you'll need to try it yourself, and we can use commands to verify whether the client meets the She can directly access the server. If it can access directly, it means passwordless login has been set up. If not, you can set it up manually. Manually, you just need to, well, take our servers. SSH public key and send it to the client, just manually. Set up this passwordless login. This might not be present in the environment as this has happened before. The environment might not be the same for everyone, and it might not be the same for each exam. So, you need to pay attention to this point. This is similar to what I mentioned in the beginner stage, where I told everyone that the software might be installed, or it might not be. It's the same principle as everyone installing it themselves. In the intermediate exam, most of the environments don't have any issues. Specifically, in the first part, regarding the connectivity between the client and the server, you need to check this yourself using commands. If there are no issues detected, you can proceed to the next steps. This is our basic environment, including this check. Actually, in the intermediate exam, the checks are relatively simple. Why? Because it doesn't require any specific commands or extensive checking commands. Generally, as long as your script can run normally, meaning our playbook can run normally, uh, then there should be no problem. Basically, no problem. Of course, it's best to use some commands to check. To prevent what? To prevent you from having written some parameters incorrectly, no. If the parameters are wrong, our script can still run, but what about the result? There might be a slight discrepancy with the requirements of the task, so you need to spend a little extra time checking it. However, generally speaking, as long as your script runs smoothly, there shouldn't be any issues. Usually, there are no problems, and this is one of our points. Ah, some basic information about the environment. Having said so much, let's now specifically look at how to use our environment, which is the same. First, like our beginner environment, because we have integrated two environments into one virtual machine, integrated into one virtual machine. So when you're doing this, it's best to, hey, in R, in the beginner's exam. First, restore a set of environments, then take a snapshot. And for the intermediate level, also restore a set of environments, and take a snapshot. Then, whichever you're working on, you restore that snapshot, which makes it more convenient. 
So here, let's specifically operate on the intermediate environment. The operation here is actually quite similar to our beginner level. Almost the same, except for one thing, which is that it. The version of the linked environment that needs to be switched is different. So here, let's specifically operate on it. First, let's open our environment. Ah, first open the environment. As for the password here, it's set to default. Red Hat, is that what we mean by red? The environment is the same as the primary one, because what I said before is actually the same environment as the primary one. After recovery, we click to open the terminal. After opening the terminal, we will start the next step. The first step is to reset the practice environment. Ah, the first step is to reset the linked environment. This step is quick. The second step is to switch to the CE practice environment. This step is different, okay? Please pay attention here, this step is different. Previously, for beginners, it was RH-134, but now it's RH-294. Make sure not to write it incorrectly. If you do, you'll end up back in the beginner environment. This step is to restore our ultimate environment. The time here will be slightly longer than the beginner level, which is quite normal because we are using more virtual machines here. Anyway, since more virtual machines are used, we will wait for a few minutes here. Let's pause for now. Wait until there's no issue, and then we'll continue directly. Once this step is completed, there definitely won't be any errors. However, depending on your computer's configuration, the time taken might vary, which is quite normal. So, up to this point. After switching to the practice environment, what's next? Next, we need to start something in which is our virtual machine. We're at the stage of starting the virtual machine again. First, we need to start the classroom separately. It's the same as the beginner level. We first need to start the classroom separately. Then we can start everything else together. This will take a little bit of time. Here, everyone just needs to wait a moment. However, first, we can use the VRT manager to check the status of the virtual machine. Ah, now this one is already open, right? Next, let's move on to the others. We can directly switch to two and start all to launch all virtual machines. There are several here, as mentioned earlier, one control and five regular nodes. Ah, here we need to wait a little longer. This will also take a few minutes. Let's pause here for a moment. Okay, once all the virtual machines are started, we can proceed to the final step, which is to execute our initialization script uh, and fully deploy our environment. Now, here again, here, once everything is open, we can first. First, make sure to extract the compressed file in our current directory. It's an Ansible compressed package. After extracting it, the next step is to switch to the secure directory, where our final execution script is located. Note, you must ensure that all subsequent messages are fully activated before execution. Ah, oh, when is it fully activated? Actually, you can see that the CPU is basically idle, which means it's running normally. If the CPU usage is particularly high, it indicates that it's just starting up. After completing this step, don't rush to execute the script. Make sure that the CPU is stable and in a normal operating state before we proceed to execute it. Our script, why? Because when your virtual machine starts up, if you just turned it on, it's technically in a startup state. However, at that time, the CPU usage will be relatively high because it's running, right? It's in a startup state. So, it's best to wait until everything is stable before executing the script. Okay, after executing here, you can take a snapshot. Once the script finishes executing, you can take a snapshot. Then we can start with our next task. All right, I'll run it directly here. Okay, so this is the deployment of our environment. In the next session, we will officially start explaining the question bank. If you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below to purchase the most stable question bank at the best price. That's it for today, everyone. Goodbye.